I've bleh. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Okay, take three. I'm struggling with this. <laughs> Um, this is kind of like a, an update, channel update, Benway update, vlog, whatever. Um, explanation, because you may have noticed a lack of content on my channel, so part of what I'm going to talk about is why that is, and what's going on, and stuff. Um, I'll start at the start. Lockdown. You're aware of it. COVID-19. Um, so I got furloughed back in March, which, while it's nice to get paid an amount to do nothing, 80% um, of not very much is not very much at all. So I, I am really so grateful to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon. You've quite literally kept me afloat, so I'm massively grateful. Um, anyway... Lockdown rules meant that I couldn't see Joe and after a couple of weeks of literally no human contact at all I was losing my marbles a bit. I was getting a little bit unhinged. I mean, I'm normally a solitary guy. I, I like my own company. I don't do people as I'm often keen to mention. Um, but it, it was doing my head in not seeing Joe, and so she said, well, come over here spend spend lockdown over here so I packed some bags and I moved over to Joe's and have been here for how long has it been a couple of months or whatever um, and really enjoying it there had never been any intention for us to live together but it's been really nice so anyway furlough furloughed from my job and the way lockdown is and pubs are going to be the last places to open up again um, and the changes coming in the furlough scheme mean I don't know if the company I work for which entire th their whole business is cleaning pubs I don't know if they're going to survive and if they do I don't know if they're prepared to go back to cleaning certain pub chains, including the one that I have been working for, because they... I can't... it's not my place to say. Stuff happened. That job, not at all secure. I have not a great amount of confidence that when the furlough rules get tightened up and firms have to start contributing to furlough payments, I, I, I could see myself being laid off, not having a job to go back to. So I started looking for work, and I started looking for work in Chesterfield, as opposed to in Worksop. Uh, the plan was find a job here, find a, a room in a shared house like I've been in, in Worksop, but in Chesterfield. Anyway, we'll get back to that. So I started looking for jobs, and I spotted one that looked like something I would like to do. It, I was looking for cleaning jobs. I used to do warehouse work. I'm just not physically in a position where I can do that anymore. I just can't lift. Um, so I was looking for cleaning jobs, because while it's pretty menial work, I found that cleaning the pub, I actually, for the most part, really enjoyed it. I mean, it can be gross, and the. Co I mean, I worked for two companies in my time that I was there. The first company got fired by one of the pub managers, but he kept me and hired a new cleaning company, and I worked for them, and they were a better company. Um, but I mean, in my time in that pub, I uh, was for a time the longest standing member of staff in the place who wasn't even a member of pub staff. <laughs> which was amusing. Um, I outlasted three managers. Well, I don't know. The last manager might go back after lockdown ends. I don't know. Certainly the deputy manager's not going back. 
you know, I've gone through management teams, I've gone through at least four teams of bar staff. There is one person who went back who was there when I started there. And I, I don't know if any of those staff are going to go back. So I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, I did find that I liked cleaning, doing that. So I looked for cleaning work in Chesterfield because, yeah, it's menial work, but it suits my mindset. It's repetitive, and I like repetitive. It takes a certain structure, and um, you've got to be, um, what's the word, systematic. And I am systematic in my way of doing things. So it suits me. Uh, certain aspects can be gross. Anyway, I got off invited to an interview, um, which was the most bizarre interview I've ever had. Because <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't tell you about the, the specific place. Um, but the interview happened outside the building. It was like, it seemed like if I turned up, I got the job. Except there was a very, very strict vetting procedure. Um, so I went away from the interview with the impression, I think I got that job. But then I didn't hear anything for two weeks. Was it two weeks or was oh. it longer? I don't know. Um, and so after a time I was thinking, uh, I guess I didn't pass vetting. And then out of the blue I, I get a message saying, yep, can you start tomorrow? And I'm just like, what? I was about to start looking again. I mean, I'd all, I've been looking continuously, but I, I've been thinking, yeah, I've got that, I'm, I'm sorted. And then to thinking, no, I haven't got it, I'll just forget about that. And was looking at other jobs and about to apply for another one. And then it's like, yeah, start tomorrow. So I started, um, actually on a, on a Friday morning. I'm working weekends, nine hours Saturday, nine hours Sunday. It's a long shift and it's physically, well, I'm out of shape is the thing. I was in pretty good shape working in, in the pub in Worksop. It's physical work and it's tiring and you get hot. But when you've done it for a while, you, you just physically get more able to do it and it doesn't take it out of you. But I'm out of, out of shape. I mean, two months doing nothing. I've put on half a stone. So uh, when I started working again this weekend, just gone, it was like sweating buckets. Uh, probably people looking at me thinking, has he got COVID? Because it's, it's a thing that's obviously being taken seriously. It's a, I can't tell you where it is. I can't tell you what it is, except it's a big office building with what I can only describe as storage facilities. So it's a mishmash of... Mostly I'm buffing corridors, which I really like. <laughs> I like using a buffer. Um, the difficulty is buffing a corridor is actually much harder work than buffing a large pub floor. Uh, with a buffer you want room to move and in a corridor there isn't much and that makes it physically harder. You've got to manhandle the machine more and be more precise in your movements. You can't do big wide sweeping arcs because you slam it into the walls and upset the people in the offices. Um, and that building is hot so I'm just like sweating buckets. That's part of the job and the other part is cleaning these storage areas um, and for that I'm using this machine that is a, a cross between a jet wash and a wet vac. Um, it has the potential to be messy. It's very hot work and it's not just like sweating buckets but also you're getting the spray back of the water um, <laughs> just getting soaked uh, it's novel uh, there are a lot of people around as well which after cleaning a pub um, I'm used to having the place to myself I mean the, the nice thing about this job while there are lots of people around it being a weekend I don't have a supervisor there 
I am, I'm literally working on my own initiative. I've been told the things I've got to do. I've been given a list of things to do. But there are procedures and things where I'm not sure what I'm meant to be doing. And I can ask the people who are around, but they don't necessarily know either, which makes it kind of stressful. But I think I'm doing all right. Um, I was going to say something else and I forgot what it was. Probably many things I want to say about it or thought I'd say about it and can't remember what they are. But yeah, it's. Um, I think it's going to work out as a better job than the last one. It's definitely more interesting. There's more potential variety. I think there's more potential to move up in in the company if I want to, but I'm not actually sure if I want to. I just, I like the idea of work a weekend and it's solid hard work, you know, that take, takes up the best part of the day and is exhausting, but then the rest of the week's my own. Um, the, I think the pay is better. I will find out when I get paid. Um, it's walk. It, I'm getting a lift there with Jo in the mornings on the mornings that she's not working and, and back again. It's like she works every other weekend, um, but I can walk there. And walking there is not a biggie. Walking back when I'm knackered, <laughs> that's hard work. But it's, it's good, it's nice, it's secure. I mean, I've been feeling so insecure being furloughed and not knowing, am I gonna have a job to go back to? Where with this, it's like, good. Feel like I'm on a more solid base. And it's a weight off my mind. And it is overall, I think, a better job. Um, I like being left to my own devices. I, it's. Diff what, that's what I was going to say, it's different to cleaning the pub where in the pub I was basically a su supervisor, I had a colleague who was technically the same rank as me, I went through four or five colleagues in my time there, don't know if that says something about me, <laughs> but anyway, um, but other than my colleague usually the pub was empty, you know, we'd get in there, there'd be no one there, we'd clean it and leave and there'd mostly still be no one there. Some mornings there'd be some pub staff, but it was usually only one or maybe two people. This place where I'm working now, uh, is it? parts of it are empty. Like the floor where the cleaners, the cleaning company office is, is pretty much deserted, which is nice. But the floor that I spent half of my day yesterday was busy, there are people, and trying to clean around people is, I find it stressful because I don't do people, but it's interesting and they're very friendly people, which is good. Uh, I was made to feel quite welcome, it's like, that. I don't know if they recognise me as a new face or not, but they were very friendly. Um, and the storage area, I wish I could tell you things about that, but I can't, but it's fascinating and yeah. So all in all, it, it's interesting, and I, I am, I mean, it's menial work, but I'm enjoying it. Um, so, here's the other thing. Living with Joe for the past two months, we, neither one of us had in mind to live together. That was never the plan. Um, but having stayed here for two months, and I mean, we were both like, that's a bit scary, that has the potential to go wrong. Um, that's, that's the thing, you, you never really know a person properly until you've lived with someone. Until you've lived with that. There's a sentence I've completely mangled. You never really know a person properly until you've lived with them. That's what I'm trying to say. And sometimes that doesn't go well. So the idea of coming to stay for an indeterminate period of time was really quite scary. But we gave it a go and it's actually been absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I, I can't put it more clearly than that. We both really, really liked me staying here. So 
the, where the plan had been, I would rent another room somewhere in Chesterfield, so it would be nearer for me to go to and from. But we kind of figured, sod it, I'll just move in here. It makes sense on a lot of level levels. Um, the, the difficulty is going to be where am I going to put all of my stuff? Uh, because it's not all going to fit, it definitely won't fit in the flat. I've got some of my consoles here, they're, they're down here, I've got, there's like a little cabinet, and I'm going to be able to bring more and fit it. You can't see, but I can fit a fair few. The ones that I use to make videos, the ones that I've got SD card solutions and can easily load games, uh, they're going to be in here. And then there's a storage space downstairs, like a storage unit, where I'll be able to fit a lot more. And then other stuff that I'm not going to use too much. It's like, I've got a book collection. I'm never going to read them. So I'm going to sell them, basically. Uh, CDs, it's like, okay, I like having physical media, but I don't actually listen to the CDs because I've ripped them all and I just play the MP3s. So it's like, uh, either I'm going to sell them or they're... Basically what it comes down to is I'm going to have to rent a storage unit somewhere if I can find one cheap. And uh, uh, All of my stuff that I don't need to use on a daily or weekly or even monthly basis is going to have to go into storage somewhere until I decide what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I don't know what storage is going to cost. I'm hoping it'll be cheap. Uh, I will shop around. But it's going to be very, very interesting. I mean, it's, it's going to take a little while. I'm waiting until I get paid to see what my finances are going to be like before I hand in notice on the room and I've got to give them four weeks notice um, and in that four weeks I'll use that to bring my stuff over here and we'll find out how much can I fit in this room, how much can I fit into the storage thing downstairs and then I'll know how big a storage space I need to rent. So uh, it's going to take a little while it's taking an amount of my time, hence I've been quiet on here a bit, but I'm not stopping, I'm not quitting, um, I love doing this. Ad money and Patreon still very welcome. <laughs> so my finances, I don't know where they're at at the moment, as in I know how much money I've got, I don't know how much money I'm going to have coming in. I've got to see the the wages that were I've heard various different figures seen them written being told by various different people and they're all different uh, so it's like left hand doesn't know what the right hands doing so I'm just gonna wait and see I don't know how that's gonna turn out so it's like anything I understand that <sighs> words I know quite a few of my patreon supporters upped their, how much they were don donating, is that the word, contributing, when, when I found myself furloughed and struggling and I am massively, massively grateful and I will understand if they or some of them decide, okay, Steve's got a job now, I'm going to drop it down or, or stop it altogether. I understand. I'm not saying please stop. <laughs> um, it helps me hugely. But uh, whatever you decide you want to do regards Patreon is entirely your business and up to you. And I will understand whoever decides whatever they decide. It, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to sit here and say, please, give me money. Um, no, I'm just immensely grateful for everyone who has helped me with that. Um, as I said earlier, you've kept me afloat, literally. You know, I, I, I would have really struggled, so I'm massively grateful. Um, other things, I'm going to move on to a completely different subject now, because I'm just having a waffle. There's going to be gameplay footage, and I might be sitting down in the bottom hand corner while, you know, of the gameplay footage. Um, other things, music. Some of you are probably familiar with my taste in music. It's what I would call alternative rock and or pop. Um, 
with some gothic I, I like goth music but the old 80s goth and I like 80s pop synth pop um, my taste is very varied but one thing I've never been into is metal it's not been my thing I mean I like a little bit of ACDC I, I like Black Sabbath's Paranoid album I like um, a little, very little bit of Motorhead, and I'm, so we're talking like classic late 70s, early 80s kind of thing. Um, modern stuff, not really at all. I mean, the hardest music I like is Nine Inch Nails, which isn't metal, it's kind of like industrial. Joe likes metal. She's born same era as me, we grew up with the same musical stuff on the telly, 80s pop, so we're both, we, we have that, we, we both like some of the same stuff. And then she got into the like early 80s hardcore punk. Now I like punk, but I like classic punk, Susie and the Banshees, The Damned, that kind of era, uh, where she likes the, what I would call second generation punk, hardcore or oi, I've heard it referred to as, I don't like that. But she likes metal. Uh, very, very into her, her, her. God, here I am dropping my H's. Into her heavy metal. <laughs> um, and one of the things she's into is the uh, Download Festival, which is like the, the. It evolved from the Donington Monsters of Rock Festival. I've never been to either, but because of COVID 19, download was cancelled this year so they televised a kind of virtual download festival on Twitch and YouTube and Joe put that on and whenever I well, Friday afternoon and Saturday and Sunday evenings I was able to sit down with her and watch that and I found it fascinating um, For the most part, I would still say, no, I'm not into metal. But I was able to get my head around, to a degree, what it's about, or rather what I think of the different types of bands that I saw. Um, and I kind of concluded there were three types of band that were appearing. There were the ones that I would consider top-notch bands, great musicians with their own vision. They're, they're, while they have their influences, they've got their own thing. And they're like quality artists. And I, while I might not necessarily like the music, I've got a lot of respect for them as musical artists and musicians. And then you got what I would consider sort of second tier bands who, good musicians, but they haven't got their own vision. So what they're doing is, it's kind of like paying homage to their influences. One band that comes to mind is um, Airborne. They were fun. They were really good fun to watch. Very enjoyable. And you could spot their influence. They've probably got several influences, but the one that I could see that stood out a m from a mile was ACDC. It, it, was, it was just like a really, really, really good homage to ACDC. And I was like, yeah, this is fun. It's not anything I'd never heard before, but it was, it was quality entertainment. Good musicianship, good songwriting, fun nothing nothing groundbreaking about about it it's like it's derivative and generic but it's good quality so I can respect them as good musicians um, and then you've got what I would call your third tier who it's like metal is loud and if it's thrash it's fast and the vocal can be screamed or growled or whatever and you've got some bands who will use that as cover they can't sing, they can't play, they can't write songs they're shite 
but they produce their shite at high speed and high volume. So there will be some people who'll think, yeah, this is loud and fast, this is great. Um, and I just look at that and I think it's embarrassing. <laughs> and there is one band, if there are metal fans on here, <laughs> they're probably going to hate me. One band who were, that fell very, very much into that category, and I kind of understand why. Fozzy, Chris Jericho of WWE, talented wrestler, entertainer, let's call him that, Re wrestling entertainment athlete. Mm. He, he's, he's good at that, but he's not a good singer, he's a poser. And it's like, here he is on the stage, running around, just shouted vocal, with a band behind him who may individually be good musicians, but put them all into a band, they were out of time, they were out of key, it was like every one of them was playing a different song, but they were all playing it at the same time, while he shouted his vocals over the top. And it was fucking awful. Uh, I mean, some things are so bad that they're great, but that was so bad it was embarrassing, it was cringe-worthy. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's the best example I could give of, like, third tier. So, having watched all of that and, and found it very interesting, there, there was one band that were on it that I knew I... I wouldn't call myself a fan, I would never download any of their music or buy any of their music or whatever, but I don't mind streaming it every once in a while, just because it's novel, is baby metal, which is like a, a bunch of... Well, it's, it's weird, because the music is metal, it's a proper metal band, but the singers, originally they were like in their teens, mid-teens, I guess, they're singing effectively J-pop, they're Japanese and they're singing J-pop over metal music and they're doing their whole dance routine completely manufactured you know there's nothing they're not a proper band but they're entertaining and I, I find that amusing I'll sit and watch them if they're on and just think yeah, this is really weird stuff but it's, it's fun to watch but I found one band and the, these are what I would call these totally came in my top tier I mean, there were, there were quality bands in there who've been around for donkey's years um, who I just couldn't get into. Never could. But this one band who I'd never heard of before and I was watching it and I was like, wow, they were really, really good. And that is Gojira, who were a French band. Uh, the, the, the name Gojira, that's like the Japanese way of saying Godzilla. Um, as best as I can tell, the band are like existentialists. They're not singing... <sighs> a lot of metal, to my ears and to my mind, the lyrics are bullshit. It's, it's, it's like, the, look at me, I'm hard, or look at me, I'm a sex god, or look at me, sex, drugs and rock and roll, or whatever, and it's just bullshit, and they're doing an act, and I don't like all that. Um, Gojira is about existentialism like the uh, the nature of the universe as best as I can tell because it's hard to tell what he's singing because he's just it's that thrash vocal I think they're meant to be death metal actually don't know um, the music is fast but not always very very powerful um, but not they're not showing off, they're not going, look how fast we can go, or look how much we can do this or that or whatever. It's, it's good musicianship and constructed in a way that's not showing off. They're not a bunch of posers. I mean, they're just dressed in black. Um, and there's no, there's no hard man bullshit, no biker gear, no huge beards. Which is fine if that's what you're into, but I'm not. So I looked at them and I thought, yeah, I can see where these are coming from. And I like it. And I mean, they only played three songs on um, on the download thing. And I'm sweating sitting here. I've got the sun on my back. Excuse me for dripping all over. I'm not, but yeah. So I watched, I watched a load of videos of theirs on YouTube. And it's like, great. 
Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha's just walked into the kitchen and Millie's seen her and Millie loves Tasha. Right down <laughs> So yeah, I've been watching a load of them and it's like, wow. Come here then. <laughs> so yeah, Joe has corrupted my music tastes. And watching the Gorgira, I happened to stumble across another band who weren't on download, but I, I've heard of them for donkey's years, never actually heard anything by them. But YouTube played some and I was like, wow. And it's like... I. I find it really, really, really hard to find music that I like that I've never heard before. So when I hear something that makes me go, wow, that's rare and unusual. And that band was Tool. I've heard of them before, but never actually heard them. And I've only heard four songs since I sort of stumbled across them, but three of them made me go, wow, that's great. So I'll be looking into listening to more of their stuff. And there will be a whole load of people now who are going to want to say, hey, you should listen to this, or you'll love this band, or you'll love... Don't. <laughs> My taste is so... Um... <sighs> what I like in music, I, I know it when I hear it. I can't explain to you what it is. It's a certain orderly nature, but the vocal is critical as well and I can't explain what it is that I like to you. So if you're saying you'll love this because you like them, I can pretty much guarantee you I won't. So suggesting bands to me just doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of all I've got to say. That's what's been happening. Uh, I've been working, or I've started working, uh, I'm going to be moving. It's, that's going to be quite a long process. It's going to take a bit of time. And I've been developing my, well, adding some stuff to my musical listening, whatever. Yeah. But I'm still going to be doing this. You know, there has been disruption to my video output, but I will be continuing to do this as much as I possibly can. There will be some disruption to it while I'm moving and stuff like that. Uh, working means I have a little bit less time, but I still have the week, so I can still do... Okay, bit of ragged editing there. Can't remember what I said before I jump cut. So, um, yeah, there's... Uh, Normal-ish service will resume. Uh, Going to be doing another photo montage, because that did quite well. Um, and more gameplays and Q&As. Uh, at least two videos a week I'm aiming for. I mean, things are a little disrupted at the moment, but I should get things back to normal, I hope, pretty soon. So to all those of you who have continued to watch, thank you. To all those of you who have continued to support me on Patreon, massive thank you. Yeah, don't know what else to say. It's been very, very interesting, and I think things are going to stay very interesting for some time. Um, I need to get to know Chesterfield more. Um, lockdown being what it is, while I've been here for two months, I don't know my way around very well at all. I don't know what the town... I've, I've been in the town before. I've not wandered around it on my own. You know, I've, um, Joe has shown me around, and that's been cool. It's difficult to get to know a place when everything's shut, and the way I get to know a place is that literally I wander around repeatedly and, and check out every little nook and cranny and whatever and go into the shops and see what they've got. But at the moment, going into shops, I'm not ready for that because it just ain't safe yet. But uh, I do want to investigate Chesterfield some more and find out what's what. I like it. It's got a lot more to offer than Worksop. Worksop is dying on its feet. I mean, Chesterfield's struggling with the economy and everything. It, it was struggling, apparently, before COVID. But even then, it's doing a hell of a lot better than Worksop. Worksop is a sad place, and I... I don't have to spend another night there, and I am glad, because it's, it's a sad place. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Thank you for watching. That'll do.
Um, it says here Bedway offers his thanks to those who subscribe to his Patreon account thing. Uh, is that what he needs?